Let's look at stability margins for single input plants. To get started, consider the feedback diagram. Controller, plant, attract variable Y. Stability margins are concerned with gain and phase disturbance at the plant input. We can represent this disturbance with a delta variable. Where delta is a gain multiplied by a phase term. An important transfer function for stability margins is the loop gain. We can get the loop gain by breaking the loop at the plant input. Looking at the transfer function of u out over u in, neglecting the reference command r. We see the loop gain up here, denoted lu of s. U just denotes that it's at the plant input. And now you'll recall the principle of the argument and the Nyquist stability criterion. Real imaginary plane, critical point, and loop gain. Strictly proper transfer function. So according to Nyquist, we're stable if the number of encirclements is equal to minus the number of open loop poles, where clockwise encirclements are positive and counterclockwise are negative. When you get used to this, you can find that if LU crosses the critical point, minus one, then the system is closed loop unstable. But Nyquist also shows us nearness to the critical point, and that leads to the measure of robustness in terms of gain and phase uncertainty captured in the delta block. In particular, two phasers of the loop gain are of interest, one will denote at the frequency omega-1. The phase angle of the loop gain is minus 180 degrees. For the second phaser of interest, we draw the unit disk around the origin. And then the phaser, or the loop gain evaluated at frequency, call it omega-2, that intersects the unit disk. Our stability margins related to gain and phase disturbance are derived from these phasers. The pure real phaser is related to the gain margin k star. The phaser that touches the unit disk is related to the phase margin theta star. In the follow-on to this video, we will derive formulas for k star and theta star, or collectively referred to as the stability margins. For this, we'll use the delta uncertainty model.
will also show how stability margins can be misleading. This will lead us to develop the return difference transfer function and the concept of vector margin. We'll also discuss cases of multiple margins and how to select the most conservative margins when there are more than one.